Hey guys, it's Jason with Track Cars. Uh, today we're going to be going over the suspension components, the rear suspension components of a 2017 Camaro SS. Um, this version is a 1 OE. Uh, it has the same components as a regular SS or probably any 6 gen Camaro. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick overview of all the, the uh, trailing arms and control arms that are on the back of these cars. I know it can get confusing sometimes because it's a multi-link setup. So, but basically, so we're on the passenger side here, and here's obviously the brake rotor and the hub. Um, all of these control arms and trailing arms connect to the hub. Um, but, so back in the old days, or not that long ago, you had a double wishbone suspension. So you had a, one big upper control arm shaped like a V, and one big lower control arm shaped like a V. Well, on the Camaro, uh, and like a lot of newer cars, performance cars, you have what's called a multi-link setup. So here you have an upper control arm, which ties to the upper part of the hub. And here you have the lower control arm, which the spring mounts to, and it reacts off the body of, a, of this car. And what these two arms do is they allow the wheel to go up and down. Uh, however, they only support the wheel and the axle and the whole driveline in one plane. So you have what's called these trailing arms. Some people call them lateral links. And what these do is they give what's called an X and Y component. So you have a forward, helps take care of some forward motion as well as some more lateral motion. So they come in at an angle here. And this one is the upper trailing arm and down here on the bottom is the lower trailing arm. They look very similar. Um, they've got all these lightning holes and everything in them. Um, so you have an upper control arm, a lower control arm, an upper trailing arm and a lower trailing arm. And now you have one more piece which is called a tow link this car has already already replaced these tow links. But what this does is it adjusts the wheel this way. It actually sets the toe of the wheel. Um, or did the OEM factory ones, and I'll show you on the workbench over there, is, is a um, more like a um, eccentric, it's an eccentric adjuster. These are more like a tie rod. These replacement aftermarket ones, they're from BMR. Um, very beefy. I like them because you can adjust them when they're on the car without an eccentric. Because what happens is the eccentric over time will get loose and you'll, your toe, especially if you're doing heavy track use, your toe will change over time. Um, and that's due to the eccentric bolts, the torque to yield bolts that GM uses. Don't pinch the control arm or the lateral or the toe, sorry, the toe link. They don't pinch the toe link good enough to hold it in where it needs to go. So this BMR kit has what's called, look under here Travis, has what's called a lockout kit. And this prevents the lateral link from actually moving anymore. So this little spacer that they supply locks this link in, which makes the, eliminates the eccentric. And then now you essentially have just a rod with rod ends adjusters, just like a tie rod up front. So uh, we'll go over to the workbench and I've got the other side completely taken apart and I'll show you the control arms over there. Okay guys, uh, here are all the control arms on the workbench here. So we'll start at the back. Uh, I was just talking about the tow link. This is the factory tow link here. It's this big, huge dog bone looking piece. Um, it's not a bad piece. It actually has uh, spherical bearings already in it. So you can see them kind of moving around. Um, one of mine, and I believe it's this one, this side, yeah. It's clicking inside. So that was another reason that I wanted to replace. You can't, you can't hear it, or, but you can feel it clicking. And I didn't really like that. So I switched these out. Again, structurally, they're fine. The sphericals are, are fine, um, except for this one making a little bit of noise. Um, but the, uh, the main purpose of eliminating this was to uh, get rid of the eccentric adjuster. Um, these two are the lateral links. Uh, that we talked about. So these come in at an angle, we said, and they swing up and down with the um, the whole hub assembly, but um, actually they're going this way. But the problem with these are the bushings are actually pretty good. Um, they're pretty stiff. Even if I put them, um, I don't get any movement. Um, these, these arms are typically loaded in tension, which is pulling, and compression, which is pushing. So you think, oh my gosh, this little Swiss cheese thing. Well, actually, for the way the arm is loaded, 
it's structurally sound. Uh, if you twisted it or if you tried to bend it, I could probably bend it right here over the workbench if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. But that's not the way it's loaded. Um, so both of those arms are the same. And then this one is the upper control arm. So it looks pretty small, but all it has to do is swing. Uh, you'll see that this actually has a spherical in it already on the one end. So this one's free and nice and moves around. Um, other than it's just a regular bushing, it goes to the hub. But uh, this little control arm has been, um, it's fully boxed in. So this is the upper. I know some people replace the uppers, but um, I don't really see the need to right now. My bushings are still in good shape. It's got a spherical on this end. Um, so I'm gonna keep, keep the upper control arm. Um, however, I think I am gonna replace the lateral links um, or the trailing arms because uh, of how they're made. I'm not crazy about how they're made. So if you look here, it's essentially a stamped piece of steel. So it starts out as a flat piece of steel, runs through a press, it's bent up. Uh, that's how they get this shape made. But when you look at it, it's actually essentially bent sheet metal and then they just press this little bushing through here. Um, they did the same thing for the other one. Now, all these bushings are the same. Travis Bobman over to the car. All these bushings, it's the same bushing pressed in. You can see them right here. You can see them right there. You can also see them on the lower part of the hub here. The difference is this is pressed into a great big uh, cast aluminum hub assembly, which is at a, has a machined bore in it. So it's, it's, a, it's a tight fit like it's supposed to be. Uh, even when there's no hardly zero play in any of these rubber bushings. Um, but here on this end, if I go to put it in the vise, you can actually see this thing flex around a little bit. And essentially it's always, get the right one here. It's loaded like this anyway. So it's again, tension and compression. But if there's any sort of lateral load a little bit on the wheel, which does happen on the track, big bumps, um, high G forces. Imagine if you're cornering really hard to this side, uh, then you hit a bump there, it will deflect some. So what I'm gonna do is replace the upper and lower, these two arms with some uh, aftermarket units because what they also do is they get rid of this other bushing and they replace it with a spherical. So at that point, everything will have a spherical on it. There'll be a spherical uh, on this link because it's a new control arm, on the lower link because it's a new control arm. The upper control arm, which fits here, already has a spherical on the inboard side. And the lower, actually believe it or not, the lower control arm, which is right here, also has a spherical installed on the outer link. You can get replaced, you can get replacement inner links, but this already has a spherical installed in there. I'm not gonna replace the lowers. Um, just yet because I don't see any real need to. So um, again, that's uh, the links here in a uh, nutshell and just kind of give me my plan moving forward. I'll replace these trailing arms and then I've got these uh, tow links already replaced. And then um, I'm also gonna go over in my next video, the uh, BMR lockout kit for the subframe. So what that does is helps eliminate shift in the subframe or the rear cradle, people call it, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll go over the bits and pieces when we get to installing that. So thanks for watching.